Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Rent Arb Studios Comics, and this is my show where I review comics, tell you about the things that I have backed on Kickstarter, and uh, other geekery stuff going on in my life, um, things that I'm drawing, which I haven't been doing a whole lot lately because uh, I'll get into that later. Um, so, you may notice the setting here has changed a little bit. I'm no longer in my basement. This is now my office, and uh, as you can see here, it's still a little work in progress. I have these walls, they're getting covered as we speak by all these prints that I get from Kickstarter are going to be hitting this wall, getting stuck there forever. All that fun stuff. So you may not recognize this. This is White Ash, Duplicant, Standstill, which, oh, that was a good one. Uh, Miskatonic High, one of my favorites. And Goth Ghost Girl. So, all these fun little prints, I have a ton of them because uh, every time I back something, these show up. So if you send me one of these with your comic, it's going on this wall. Plain and simple. All that fun stuff. Maybe even things like this bookmark from Woodland Creatures will end up on this wall. So, all that fun stuff. A um, lot of cool art. I mean, how do you not hang up something as cool as this? I mean, you get this, it has to be hung up. So, thank you all for uh, sending me these things when I back your projects. I guess all that. Um, so, yeah. Pretty soon these white spaces are going to be gone and uh, covered with the prints you guys sent me. So, uh, what's been going on in my life? Um, I just recently came home from a vacation where uh, I took my kids up to Salmon, Idaho, where my dad is buried. Um, we had a good time up there. Uh, my dad's buried in kind of a forest cemetery. Uh, there are trees actually growing up through the graves of... There's some graves that have been there from the 1800s even and uh, it's a, it's an interesting uh, cemetery if you you could google Gibbonsville cemetery and uh, it's Gibbonsville Idaho if you want to get specific in your google and yeah it's it's pretty crazy uh, cemetery and that's where my parents are going to be buried my mom's still alive <laughs> thank goodness and uh, but my dad did pass away two years ago and is buried up there so I it's kind of a f little bit of a distance uh, about six or less hours from where I live and uh, so I thought I'd take my kids up there and show them where their grandpa's buried and we did a little bit of river rafting uh, stuff like that and so whew, um, <laughs> So yeah, uh, and um, and working on this office, getting it ready for uh, making comics and stuff, getting my comics out of the basement so we can get our basement done. A lot of things been going on, crazy summer, uh, yeah, so, whew, okay, now we're out of all that heavy stuff, uh, let's talk about comics, and uh, so I'm go I re did read a couple things um, lately, and uh, so I will start with a comic called Shapes. So this is Shapes 3 and 4, and, oh, let's see, sorry about that, um, Shapes 3 and 4 here by Jason Brubaker, it's by Cave Pictures Publishing and uh, Caves Picture Publishing. Let's see here. Get you some of the uh, credits here. So this is created by Rick Reckedal and written by Jason Brubaker. Co-written by Rick Reckedal and colors by Adrian. Br Jason Brubaker and Adrian Armatifio, lettered by Simon Boland, and edited.
edited by Shariar Valadi. I hope that's right. If I don't pronounce that right, you can come on my show and tell me how to pronounce your names. That sounds fun, right? So, these are some cool stories. I love uh, Jason Brubaker's art. It's a little on the cartoony side, but definitely tells a story. Every piece, everything he draws tells you a story. And uh, so this is about a world where um, the entire world like watches other people play online on this game called The Drift. And uh, this character named Trip, he can actually travel to that world rather than just play it on his laptop and phone. And uh, people think that he's just playing the game, but he's actually living it. It's actually going on. Kind of uh, like Tron, I guess, or something like that. So he's in this actual world fighting for his life, and his dad is missing and in that world also. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really good story. I got issues three and four from my local comic shop, Gamers Asylum. You could do the same. You can have your local comic shop order shapes for you. Um, I've already reviewed one and two. This is three and four. And it's an ongoing thing. Uh, that's how it goes with me too, is by the time I get to my comic shop, which is not right here where I live, but over in Ogden, um, two issues have come out. So yeah, it's been, so those uh, shapes, one, three and four. Next on the list is um, X Factor. X Factor is by, let's see, that's not the credits page, here we go. X Factor here is by Peter David, one of my favorite writers. He, uh, he wrote X Factor for a long time in the 90s and then again in uh, the 2000s. And he also wrote Spider-Man 2099 and a Supergirl, a Supergirl series that I liked a lot. And uh, so he's one of them that when I when he writes something, I like to find it and read it. And I'm rereading this currently right now because uh, why not, right? And so I'm throwing this randomly through my uh, read pile. The Multiple Man is my favorite character, and so. As you can tell by my shirt, I have the same shirt the Multiple Man on has on right now. So there's the Multiple Man right there. Pretty cool looking, huh? And that's the shirt. Uh, I would actually there. He has different shirts, and I'd like to be able to add all of the shirts to my uh, wardrobe. Let's see here. What do we got? So this Volume One X Factor introduces you to uh, X-Factor Investigations created by the multiple man James Ma Jamie Madrox and uh, let's see it also introduces that the multiple man has a pe problem with his multiples where uh, each one has a different personality and is not really that controllable uh, and so that this introduces you to his little dilemma problem with his cloning and uh, it also introduces you to his new group of X Factor investigations so one of his uh, powers is that he sends duplicates everywhere to uh, he can send one to law school pass the bar exam he, which he did and he can send one to be a doctor send one to get his detective's license all sorts of stuff and uh, so he starts up a detective agency where he helps mutants and this is right on the tails of the uh, mutant thing that uh, Scarlet Witch did where she cast the spell No More Mutants and most of the mutants lost their powers so we're dealing with a world where all these mutants no longer have powers one of those is uh, a guy named Richter which he uh, he can control the sonic movements of the earth, making earthquakes, hence the name Richter. And so he no longer has a mutant power, and he's just a normal human being. Also on the team is Siren, 
Banshee's daughter, she screams, and those screams can make her fly. And Strong Guy, who's a big guy that's strong, it's kind of dopey, but that's what's funny, that's what's great about him, is that all that fun stuff. Um, and Rain Sinclair, who is in the New Mutants movie that, I, if we ever get to see it, I'd love to see it, but who knows where that's going, right? And what else? Oh, and this introduces you to, let me find that page. A new char a character called Layla Miller, and uh, oh my gosh, Layla Miller is one of my favorite characters. I don't know if you can see her on there. But uh, Layla Miller shows up, she's at, I, I don't know how old she is, 10 or 14, it's hard to tell um, in comics, let's see here. So Layla Miller shows up and all she does is she says, I, I know stuff and she does know stuff, things, things are happening and, uh, and people can't explain it. Um, and you find out that she was a she was a mutant, got her powers on on the day that all the powers disappeared from certain mutants. So her power showed up for one day, scared all the other orphan kids that was in the orphanage with her, and uh, so now they hate her because she used to be a mutant, but now she's not. She has no power, so they beat her up all the time, and she leaves. But yep, so yeah, there's Layla Miller. The artwork in this is really awesome, really uh, dark toned, noir, if you will, but with uh, bright colors here and there. And also in this storyline, you get Siren gets kidnapped and uh, beat up and all sorts of different stuff. Um, she gets it's just a crazy guy that uh, just wants to take it out on her that he lost his mutant powers also. But yeah, it's a really good storyline. Uh, Peter David is amazing, and uh, he's the reason that Multiple Man is my favorite character because, man, he did some awesome stuff with this book. So this is X-Factor, Volume 1. Um, there's a new X-Factor book coming that is out now, and uh, I, ha I should have it in my hold, but who knows with the way COVID's been messing up with comics just distributions and all that. Multiple Man's not in that book, but oh my gosh, if he w ever was, it would be my favorite day. Um, but yeah, check out X Factor Volume 1, and uh, those are going to be thrown into my read pile coming up, uh, interspersed with all my uh, other reads that I'm doing right now. My read pile is about this big right now. Let's see. Yep. Yeah, it's that big. Huge. So, uh, it's going to be a while till I get through some of them. Hopefully I get to them in time to uh, let you know about the Kickstarters that coincide with them, but who knows how that works. Um, yeah, I'm kind of still new at this. Stumbling my way through it. And speaking, up, uh, speaking of Kickstarters, uh, the next on my list this is a sticker from Seer Nova Comics, and uh, I love stickers, so that's going to be going on my lunchbox probably or something. Got a bookmark from Seer Nova Chronicles, and a postcard, which obviously will be going up on this wall. So it says, "Thank you. we would like to thank you personally for backing our Kickstarter." See, cool stuff. Oh, and on the back it says, "Hey Gary." Thanks for backing our project, and we still got to get you on the podcast. They have a podcast on iTunes. Um, unfortunately, uh, the only way I can get to iTunes is on my iPod Nano, so I don't ever hear the podcast. Uh, if it, as soon as it goes on Stitcher, which automatically downloads to my phones, um, then I'll be listening to that all the time. But yeah, I they still download to my iPod, but I hardly ever plug it in to get new ones. So I I have listened to like ten of their episodes, but I think they're up to the fifties already. Holy cow! Um, so I'm way behind. Anyway, let's see what 
I have to talk about. So, Seer Nova Chronicles actually has a Kickstarter going right now. So, you, if you want to jump on your computer right now and check that out, Seer Nova Chronicles on Kickstarter. Um, here's one of the comics I got from their last Kickstarter. It's called Ink. And, uh,. I think this is ink number one. They don't really number their comics. It just says M on there for mature. And uh, yeah, has the price on there. Anyway, but this is the first story of ink. It is the story is by Greg Moquin, edited by Dylan Mislowick, art by Adam Fields, colored by February. Ferdian, and lettered by Jerome Gagnon. So, what is this story about? Um, Ink is about a guy that, uh, he's just sleeping one day, and this guy breaks into his house. And I love the, I love the artwork on this, like, uh, really dark toned. And then they throw in those bright purple powers, and things like that. So uh, this guy breaks into his house, grabs him by the arm, and uh, all this fun stuff, and then he has a key tattoo on him. And then he tells him that he has to climb up Mount, let's see where did I write that, Ink. He has to climb up on, a mount, on Mount Kanman in Japan by 72 hours and uh, so he gets on a flight goes to Japan climbs that mountain and he gets there and there's a monk who tells him to go get bat bathed and go get cleaned up and in the proper attire and it, meet him in the dojo and then it ends boom uh, it, Maybe it's, there's not really a whole lot of pages in this, uh, so maybe it's just a quick sampling to get you interested. And it is interesting, so I think I will uh, I will check out where this story goes, um, find out what's going on in ink, find out what this tattoo and the and the uh, monk is. Is he going to train him how to be a fighter or something, a protector, or is he a bad guy and he wants to train him? Kind of like uh, the Ra's al Ghul thing, where he trained Bruce, Bruce Wayne, um, and then he turned out to be the bad guy. So who knows? We'll see where Ink goes from Seer Nova Comics, and uh, so that's that comic. And the next comic I have is also from Seer Nova Com Comics, and it is. Seer Nova Chronicles. These are the same comic, just different covers. There it says, thank you for backing on the back. Um, no thank you pages in these, though, but that's all right. So, Seer Chronicles is by Greg Moquin, edited by Dylan Mislowick, art by Ricardo Bastos, colored by February and lettered by Jerome Gagnon and uh, let's see my thoughts on this one were uh, the art starts out good but then I noticed um, a pixel problem a lot of them the lines seem blurry you get that jagged look when uh, you zoom in really 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 close on your phone except it's in the print problem um, with the uh, the lines. Let me see if I could find. It's, I, it probably is kind of hard to tell from the camera, but let's see here. It is actually really hard to read the words because of that blurry, jagged line problem. They just—I think they just didn't use the right pixel count. So basically, uh, there's this fireman named John. He shows up to a lab explosion, and his crew works on it. He gets buried, and for some reason they left him behind. They didn't dig him out. So 
Later that night, after the fire department's all gone, he crawls out with a superpower, like invulnerable or something. He gets hit by a car. The driver is like, oh no, what did I do? Picks him up, throws him in the car, hauls him to the uh, hospital, and then instead of helping him into the hospital though, he just drops him out in front of the hospital, and so the nurse helps him in, and then there's a guy in the waiting room, and he's like, hey, help me, and he's like, fine, you're not going to help me, I'm leaving, and uh, it's, I don't know, it just seems kind of weird, and then that guy goes home angry, and he fills his house full of gasoline, lights it on fire, and accidentally kills his wife and kid, and I just, I'm not really sure where this story is going, it just, things just seem to just happen and they don't seem to connect, the dots don't really connect like you think they would in a story. But, so those are, I have two big problems with this book, uh, the pixels and the, I don't know, the story just, I think it's missing a lot of parts of, like you get, go from A to C and you have no idea really what happened. Um, but who knows, uh, maybe that's just just a growing pain of the book, um, and it gets better in the next issue, and get, keeps getting better from there. Like, I mean, because uh, I've heard the saying, I think it was from Jake Parker, uh, done is better than perfect, and that I do stand behind those words. Um, yeah, if you if you just keep tooling it and tooling it and working on it and uh, hoping. That, like saying I, I'm not going to release it until I'm really good then you don't really actually grow any but if you put it out there and then you hear feedback like this it helps you to grow and uh, better your story so I hope that's where we go with uh, C or Nova com comics and uh, maybe that's how this book is meant to be and let's see, now what do we got here? So that's the end of my uh, reviews. Now we will jump into Kickstarter comics. What is on Kickstarter right now that you should know about? And uh, like I said, Sierra Nova com Comics is on Kickstarter right now. Check them out. Um, here's what's on the list right now. I, I got to tell you about uh, this one right now because uh, it's actually ending in just hours. So check out Love University number three. Um, let's see. I don't have the comic on me right now, but uh, Love University three is on Kickstarter. I backed it and uh, it has just hours to go. It ends on August 7th. So you better get on that if, you've, if you're watching this and it's not August 7th yet. Get on Love University three. It is about a girl that uh, she finds out that she is a cupid and uh, so she goes she gets taken to this school where they teach you how to be a cupid and um, she's a natural archer so uh, that goes hand in hand with being a cupid and uh, so Love University 3 by Class E oh, why am I holding that up that's my notes um, Love University 3 by Class E that's class space E the letter comics and uh, August 7th get on there before August 7th back it uh, you could get issues 1 2 and 3 all together I've lo I've been loving it so far the art on that is amazing and uh, the writing on it's amazing also and what else is going on Starside 3 has seven days left um, get in on Starside 3 the art on that is crazy amazing. I love it. It's very playful. It's about a, an alien invasion and uh, I don't know why I'm itchy. Um, it's about an alien invasion. Gosh dang it. Now I'm thinking about it. Uh, I've, art, I've found them uh, through social media and uh, I, I bought their comic before they even kickstarted it and now 
now they're kickstarting them. Better plat better way to uh, let people know about it, actually. So, yeah, get Starside 3. I just reviewed Starside 3 on the last episode, so check that out. You'll know exactly what you're getting in this Kickstarter. Um, you have seven days. That one ends on uh, August 13th. So get in on that one before August 13th. And uh, let's see what else are, is on my list. Um, I am Hexed, number three. A lot of number threes today, huh? Love University, Starside, I am Hexed, number three. Uh, I am Hexed, number three. I have not read before, but I'm backing it so that I'm getting one, two, and three in this bundle. Uh, it is a political thriller drama. It has witches, and they're in DC. Um, so I, I read their uh, synopsis. Everything sounded awesome. I read the few sample pages that they threw in there. They look really good. Um, it might be right up there with uh, Miskatonic High and Destiny New York. So it looks really awesome from what I've seen of it. So I backed it. And uh, what else have we got? Palmiotti's and Johnson's Pop Kill, number two. It has 23 days to go, and uh, for, it's a 40-page book, so that's a good bonus. Um, it's about uh, a world where the soda industries, there's these two twins, one, one does this cola and one does that cola, and they hate each other, and they actually send assassins to kill each other, and that's why it's called Pop Kill, because soda pop and killers... And, but anyway, it's Palmiotti. Uh, you might know him from um, what's that girl's name? Harley Quinn. <laughs> and you might know him from Harley Quinn. Um, so yeah, it, it's got amazing art. It's got an awesome story. Weird kind of alternate world of the food industry. Kind of maybe a chew thing going on there. I don't know. So but I'm getting issues one and two in this bundle. So. Uh, I liked it the first time, but I didn't back it, but then I've been seeing reviews, so now I'm really interested. Next up on the list, uh, I've already brought them up. Let's see here. Miskatonic High. Uh, they have an issue 8 on Kickstarter right now. It has 28 days to go, but Miskatonic High, it's got awesome art, like I said, and uh, uh, I, I am a big fan of Miskatonic High. I've been backing them since issue one. Love their stuff, love their art style, love their stories, and uh, can't wait to see where they go um, from here. That's on Kickstarter, and here's one that's on Kickstarter now. It's called For Goodness Sake Volume 2. I have Volume 1 in my read pile. It's actually the next book I'm reading, so that's going to be awesome. Uh, it's from Kaylin Smith. It has 28 days to go, and it is about a Thatcher and Rain. And uh, I really don't know the premise of it because it's been so long since I backed it and read that synopsis. But uh, yeah, as soon as I read uh, volume one, I will give you a big uh, synopsis about what's going on in that one. Um, I know it's about a demon and uh, or a devil looking kid, kind of hellboy looking. He's, he's a little red guy with horns and so... We'll see where that one goes. The art on that one looks awesome. And uh, something uh, obviously intrigued me enough to back it and uh, get that. So it's in my read pile. I'll, the very next review I do will be, uh, for goodness sake, volume one. So that'll be awesome. I can't wait to do that now. On to what's in my mailbag, Renton Arbs mailbox. Do, 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 do. What have I got in my mailbox? Well, I just got this postcard in the mail. Check this guy out. This is from, by the time I get to Dallas, it's a comic I just backed about a, a plague, uh, a virus that something is making people need to get to a spot on the map. And that ma spot on the map happens to be Dallas. And they are getting there at their own peril. They're zombies, but not zombies. They're not dead, but they're 
doing everything they can, walking there or driving there or flying there, so heaven help them if they're in a plane, because that's a bad way to end up in that spot. But I got this postcard in the mail that says, Hi Gary, thank you for being part of this project and I hope you dig it. Colin. So that's awesome. I can't wait to uh, get the actual book in the mail and read that. I think I'm getting issue two and one in the mail, so that'll be cool. So this little postcard is going to be going up on this wall somewhere. So I have a space waiting just for that. Next up of what I've got in the mail, you may know that I like pins. I just did a Kickstarter to get Rennar pins. and uh, So here's a pin I just got in the mail. It is a panda bear. And he says, let's see if he can focus. He says, I can't adult today on it. And I've been uh, I've been putting these pins on my mask that I wear to work, and uh, I figure there's no church anymore, so I can't put them in my tie. And uh, that's one way to be able to use these this pin collection I have is by putting them in my mask. So that came in the mail. Uh, you could get it easy from Wish for like it was under a dollar. And the shipping's always good. It just takes a long time to get Wish things, so that's the only downfall of Wish, but they get awesome stuff, and by the time you get it, you forgot you ordered it, so it's like, hey, surprise! Here's that thing I, you ordered two or three months ago. Here's something I just ordered and got in the mail. I, I read these on my phone on